what is up everybody star wars dad pack for another video today we're going to be re-looking at fennec red but this time with gameplay and i adjusted my list a little bit just from play testing some more with this list and so like my first thoughts after playing this list um on caravast and play testing it more are just that not only is it extremely aggressive but it is very very well-rounded um poe dameron is extremely busted that is an extremely busted card and you're already combining that card with red three and k2so and falcon and and just <laughs> this deck is crazy man like it it no matter what i'm playing against so far and testing at least i feel like i have a chance now against control obviously you're going you're going wide you're trying to get as many early drops down you're putting as much pressure as you can getting as many units on the board, using your surprise strikes to try to close the game out as quickly as possible, right? Against aggro, sometimes they might get off to a super fast start, so you might have to play a little defense. Uh, with you, you know, Your ambush ability with Fennec comes into play there. And then, then you have Poe. Now, you at first glance, you're like, Poe seems great as an offensive card, right? Like you're sneak attacking in Poe for eight damage. If you have a surprise strike in your hand or a heroic sacrifice, you can sneak attack Poe in for 10 or 11 damage. Absolutely, you can still do that. And that is still an amazing way to come back against aggro if you're behind. Another amazing thing about Poe is that when you are attacking, you can use Poe as a defender. So you can kill their units because Poe's a 6-6. Six, six. It's going to kill most things. Kill a unit. And then when you swing in, you discard a card and put two damage on another unit. And um, I've had a game where I did that, where I killed a unit, put two damage, then I snuck attack in a Poe to kill another thing, and then did two more damage on another thing and killed three units with Poes. So like Poe can be an incredibly defensive card too. Against control, obviously you're using Poe to like push damage to their face, as well as discarding cards from their hand, potentially. Um, this deck is... Like I said, I, th I think I said this in the first video, this is one of the most fun aggro decks I have ever played. And, I, and I'm not really a big aggro guy. Like I'm more into like decks that require more strategy, more thinking. But this deck feels like that because of the abilities that these cards have. Like there is, there is an element of thinking to this. Like you're not just swinging at their face every turn, like depending on what you're playing against. Like you have different things to do like wrecker can just you just play wrecker and kill something by just getting rid of a resource you kill something on the ground for five damage so that could be i removed a sentinel so wrecker is just like an amazing removal spell um kira is a new addition that i put in here i put a couple it says when you when played look at your opponent's hand then name a card while the students play each card with the name costs three more so this is like a very good card against I mean, especially mid-range and control because their cards are more expensive typically. But it's also good against aggro. Like, you can make something like a McClunky that's one cost, cost four now. So they're, like, a lot less likely to use it. They're probably just going to be like, I'm going to discard that. I don't want to spend four resources on a McClunky to do three damage to something. So it, um, super, super cool card. And then, obviously, against control, you're bringing in your Sparker Rebellions and your Zori Bliss and, you know, more card advantage and hand disruption type things. Um, but let's get into the units real quick. Uh, three Greedo, as always. Three Cartel Turn Code is the the new card. So you you know turn one a great turn one play is you could play both of those Greedo and Cartel Turn Code, or play two Cartel Turn Codes because it's not a unique unit. Or you could play a Leia plus a Greedo plus a Cartel Turn Code. So as I spoke about before, Leia gets even better because you have two amazing one drops to play now, one resource units i mean then we have the three green squadron which is just one of the best turn one plays in the game um in space then we have three of the ketsu onyo so ketsu onyo after testing this card out this card can do some really cool things you're just like swinging in destroying shields swinging in destroying experience um swinging in destroying bounties ketsu onyo is very very good red three is the pump effect that we have in this deck um, we do mostly have the hero symbol on most of our cards, so it, I think the only one that it doesn't is Greedo, if I'm correct. Yeah, so Red 3 does, does work in here, and it just adds to the aggressive behavior that this deck puts in, the work that this deck puts in. Um, and also, Kesu Anyo's Saboteur is definitely something you don't want to underestimate. 
for pushing damage. Then we play three Ezra for more card advantage. So the cool thing about this one, of course, is that we can ambush it in on on our four resource turn, kill a thing, and then um, you know sort out the cards on top. And obviously, we're going to be later in the game. This card gets better too because we can play a card from the top of our deck to help our hand size get bigger, which is great for Poe. Three Falcon, of course, just one of the best aggro cards in the game. And we have three Rogue Operative, which is just amazing here because of the Saboteur, because of the Ambush. So we can, again, on the turn, the four resource turn, we can ambush this card in, kill something with four damage, kill something with a shield, kill a Dr. Evazan, whatever. Um, just, just gets even better with the Ambush ability of Fennec. K2SO, of course, is just absolutely bonkers in this deck. Uh, for multiple reasons, the ambush ability at any time with K2SO against control, it's another form of hand disruption. So, like, I feel like this deck has a very good control matchup. It's not a matchup I'm really worried about. It Probably it's a matchup I'm excited to see, I would imagine. I'm sure that some of the control decks as the set evolves and the meta evolves are going to adjust to this deck. But I think early on, this deck is going to be very, very strong. Uh, like it, I spoke about Kira, another good card against mid-range and control, and it's also good against aggro because we can ambush it in on the five resource turn, kill a thing with three damage, and then um, also affect something in their hand, make it cost three more. Poe Dameron is definitely the MVP of this deck, as I spoke about. Um, the sneak attack play, just playing it on the five resource turn when you flip Fennec is nuts. So much pressure. Then we are playing two black ones in the main board, and this is not only is this just to replenish our hand because we usually empty our hand around the six resource turn for the most 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 of the time, uh, and but it's also just to replenish our hand with this energy with Poe because Poe is doing Poe things and helping our our deck win. And the crazy thing is like the Poe black one wrecker stuff. Say a lot of games we don't even get to those cards or don't even play those cards because we've already won the game. Um, but on those games that last longer, these these last three cards become amazingly important. Uh, so Black One replenishes our hand not only for Poe, but also just to like find things like for a cause or just cheap units to keep filling up the board. Wrecker is just, I mean, the name says it for itself. It just wrecks the board. It has Overwhelm. It's a 7-6. It's going to trade favorably with those things like Darth Maul and Vader and uh, that other one that's an 8-7, it's gonna, the new uh, Kylo Ren that's a 6-7, it's just, it's gonna be an amazing card, it's probably gonna be a third copy in the sideboard, as I would imagine, uh, right now I don't have it in there, but I can imagine that I'm probably gonna add that copy in there, just for those decks that have those bigger units. Um, if I were to add the third copy, I don't know, maybe just... Maybe a bam one bamboozle because we already have ways to deal upgrade defeat upgrades with Ketsu on you. I don't know, but um, for the time being, it's two. And then our events, we have two heroic sacrifice. So again, I spoke about the the, the synergy with Poe. Like when you sneak attack into Poe for four resources, you can play heroic sacrifice and do ten damage if you have another card to discard in your hand, since Poe is going to be dying that turn anyways. So out of nowhere, Poe can just swing it for 10 damage, which is absolutely insane. Um, also with the Surprise Strike, can do 11. We play this, the 3 Sneak Attack. It's not just for Poe. It's for it's for Black 1. It's for Wrecker. It's for K2SO. Um, it's just to finish off the game later with any of our cheap units. But the main ones are going to be that we're going to be targeting are going to be Poe and Wrecker. And then K2SO. Sneak Attack and K2SO is just amazing. Just doing 7 damage. Um, then we have three of the surprise strike, of course, just a, a staple in all these yellow decks that have any kind of aggressive flavor to them. Three for a cause. So for a cause is still very, very good in here. We have a ton of heroic symbol cards in our deck. I think Greedo and surprise strike and sneak attack are the only cards that don't. So we have 41 cards that do. So most of the time we're getting three damage. Sometimes we're getting four damage. And that's all the events in the main board. So we're playing a total of 39 units. 
And then in the sideboard, we have the third black one. So we're bringing that in against mid-range and control to keep the, our foot on the gas. We're bringing in the Zori Bliss against mid-range and control because it has very strong stats of 4-7 that we get to um, draw a card and then discard a card at the end of our turn. But usually by the time we're, we have that card out and the idea is that we just want to keep playing every card. So we don't want to discard anything from our hand. We're just going to be playing out those cards. The L337 is two of right now. I spoke about this before. I originally had it in the main board, but I think I'm at, for now I'm going to have it in the sideboard for decks that have the capture mechanic. If that becomes more of a meta thing, I think that'll be a three of and possibly back in the main board. But for right now, I have a couple in the sideboard to recapture a, uh, a unit that's been captured. Three Spark of Rebellion for mid-range and control decks. And two bamboozle for decks that have a lot of upgrades or bounties and things like that. Um, so that's kind of where it's at right now. It feels very, very strong. It's a lot of fun to play this deck. I just I love that this deck has answers for just about everything so far in testing. Again, I could be missing something. Um, but so far it's just been so much fun and I really love the the ambush effect. I think that is so cool just to be able to get, instead of just playing a unit, giving it the additional value of ambushing in and killing a thing now. So like all, you know, most of our units become removal spells at this, because of that, like they can become removal spells and just being able to like get that board advantage from the ambush ability. Um, and then sneak attack is the way that we can do that with the more expensive units or just close the game out if we need to. But I've, I've had so much fun playing this deck. This is one of the, if I was going to play in a tournament as soon as the set dropped, this is the deck I would play just because I feel like against aggro, you know, it has good answers. It has ambush. It has its own very aggressive nature to it. And then it just has very, very strong cards at the top end with Poe and Wrecker. And then the hand replenishing with black one. It has Kira for hand disruption. And then your sideboard is just Spark of Rebellion. It's one of the best cards in the game. Just feels like a very good deck to, to initially bring in. And usually when the meta changes after a new set, usually aggro is the safest bet. Like usually everything has to catch up to aggro to figure out how to beat it. So I would say this is one of the safest plays. Um, and I mean, even against the other aggro decks like Kylo Ren Yellow, which is a very aggressive... I just did a video on that one. Um, that is a tough matchup. I mean, they have a lot of the same things that we're doing, and they can, if they get up to a fast star, they get more surprise strikes than us, or they start pinging us with Lady Proxima. It can add up quick, and so you know that's a, that's a thing. Um, but we do have answers for them with ambush and Poe and things like that. Okay, so our sideboard plan for aggro is pretty simple. We're just bringing in the the capture card if need be, and taking out the Kira because it is less effective against aggro but if they don't have capture cards then we're just keeping our deck exactly the way it is because our deck is already built for aggro so pretty simple currently with the cards in the card pool first the boba decks um so this is i mean boba yellow is about to be absolutely insane so i mean you <laughs> just get ready because you're gonna be playing that deck against that deck non-stop because it's I mean, they almost got too many cards. Like it, it, every day, I swear, there's like a new card that's spoiled that's going to be good in Boba Yellow. I don't, I don't understand what's going on there. Like you could probably make two Boba Yellow decks that are extremely competitive with different cards at this point. Um, so we're bringing in two Spark of Rebellion. Um, this is going to be like for overwhelming barrage to for cunning. I mean, did you see that that card today? Uh, today is the seventeenth. That was spoiled. The um, hold on, sorry, I'm going on a side side note, tangent. The uh, Tobias Beckett. My goodness, it makes it makes cunning even better than it already is if you have a Tobias out. And it ha Tobias has smuggle too, but you basically get to an exhaust a third card with cunning if you have a Tobias Beckett out. So yeah, Spark of Rebellion's coming in for cunning. Then we have two Zori Bliss coming in because it just it. It has high HP. It gives you card advantage. It, uh, it trades well with most of the units on the ground in Boba. We're taking out the Heroic Sacrifice because we don't want to kill our own units most of the time. 
It's a very, very situational card, so just taking it out. Taking out one sneak attack, again, for the same reason. We don't want our units to die. It's really, we're keeping in two sneak attack just as a, the finisher, or a very specific situation where it makes sense to sneak attack something. And then taking out just one Ezra um, to fit in the Zori Bliss. But I imagine Boba Yellow is probably going to be a tough matchup because Fennec doesn't, you know, but Boba trades favorably with Fennec. It's a 4-7 that kills Fennec. Boba also gets the Boba Fett's armor, which makes it even harder to kill now. Um, so we're pretty much against them. We're just trying to race them to the best of our ability and to use our bigger units to close things out and kill things when we can and sneak attack when we can and all that fun stuff. But I imagine that matchup is going to be tough. Verse control. So we're bringing in three spark, bringing in two Zori Bliss, and bringing in one black one. So against control, it, it kind of depends. So we're absolutely taking out heroic sacrifice. We're not going to do control any favor and kill our own units. That's not really a plan. Again, same kind of thing as Bob. It's very situational where that would be actually effective. So we're just taking it out. We're taking out one sneak attack for sure for the exact same reason. And we're bringing in three spark. The two Zori Bliss and the one black one we are most likely bringing in. Um, and then we're going to take out red three just because against a lot of control decks, they're going to be removing our units every turn. So I think the effectiveness of red three as a two three or, or when it attacks as a three three is just not that strong. And it's not we're not going to be able to buff our units a lot of times against the removal heavy decks. So we're bringing in the cards that give us card advantage when they're when they're attacking and when they're played like black one or black one is when they're defeated so we just want to have as many cards in our hand to play as many units as possible so i think red three loses its effectiveness so that's currently the card i'm considering taking out but you know again that's it really is dependent on the deck that we're playing against and how it feels but regardless we're bringing in the three spark of rebellion the two heroic sacrifice and the sneak attack are coming out Um, but yeah, that's my two cents on that. Um, definitely make sure that you subscribe and comment on the community page under the thousand subscriber giveaway with your favorite deck so that you have a chance to win either the Darth Vader or the Boba Fett unit. We are at about 850 subscribers at the time of making this video. So getting very, very close. We're getting like 50 to hundred every week. So it's just really growing fast, but I appreciate all the love and support. You guys have no idea. Um, it keeps me motivated to keep making these videos and keep pushing because it's not, you know, this takes a lot of time. So, and I don't have a lot of time. So, um, this is, you know, the little bit of free time I do have, I'm, I'm focused on making good videos and good decks and trying my hardest to make good content for you guys. I greatly appreciate all the support better. Um, but as always, Let's get into some games and see how this deck performs against some of these newer decks on Carabas. All right, all right, up against Bo-Katan Blue here. All right, what do we got for turn one? Yeah, we're gonna mulligan. I wanna be a little more aggressive. Wrecker, sweet, okay. Um, Let this go. Definitely wanna hold on to Wrecker for later. So Cartel into Ezra. Mm, this is a sweet card too. We'll just let the sneak attack go for now. Could ambush in Kira. Okay. Got a little life gain, Bo Katan going. The red three isn't bad. Um, I kind of just want Falcon though, just to kind of push damage. Do I want Ezra? Hmm. We could ambush it in next turn. I guess is the reason to keep it. But let's not. Okay, let's. Play Falcon. Go heavy in space. Okay, well that was a nice 
after all, wasn't it? Um, this card draws your opponent. Draws a card, okay. Could just ambush in red three next turn. Um, could squeeze in another unit here too. In red three, though, right? I don't want to get rid of this card. I really want to use it. Also, like the idea of playing both of these next turn. It just doesn't. I don't know. Ambush in red three. That out. Ooh, Navy Seals. Pass. Right, let that go. Okay. Interesting. Face. Just try to be more aggressive than them. He flips on six. We flip this turn. We have Wrecker next turn to take this out immediately. I mean, Fennec's ability is just nuts. Okay, we're just going to ambush in this card. Um, let's do this first. Okay, their hand is Luke Skywalker, Rivals Fall, Koska Reeves, Clan Rend. Um, I think we definitely want Luke Skywalker. Or plus three. Um, I think we want to kill that so that this can stay on the board. Okay. Phoenix ability is disgusting. Alright, we're gonna be at six resources here. Um, I think we'll let go one of the four causes. I've been so excited to play this deck, man. This deck is crazy. Craziness. He could play Rivals Fall here. Said he can play Luke, which is fine. He's just doing that. Okay, we're just gonna play this. Oh, I don't have sneak attack, though. I forgot about that part. Um, just go there. Choose a resource to destroy. Um, we can destroy that. Do five damage, or take the shield off of that, I guess. Okay. Initiative. Um, we get six. We can play Poe Cartel, or we can play for a cause Falcon. Let's let the Cartel go again. All right, he's gonna kill five ten. All right, I don't think we're too worried about killing him anymore. I think we're just going face. We know he has Luke. Okay. Um, let's do Falcon. Let's 
This deck is so much fun, man. It's easily one of my favorites. There's so many awesome cards, and this ability is just disgusting. There's the Luke. We didn't, we didn't get, okay. Uh, we're just going to claim the initiative. Uh, yes. And then we can uh, sneak attack with Poe here. <clears throat> we don't need two Poes. So do we just kill Luke? Or do we just go face? I think we just go face. For seven. He gains some life. We can sneak attack Poe for four. Okay, he defeated a unit, and we just uh, four cost to win the game. Good game. Disgusting. This deck is disgusting. All right, up against Sabine Blue here. Um, yeah, no Mulligan. I like our hand. I like that we have things. I think I'm gonna let go of. This is tough. I definitely want to start with green A wing. Next turn we're playing red three. So we're kind of just amping up into Poe, I think. Poe black one. Yeah, I guess so. I'm just, I, I'm never resourcing either of these cards. And most, I mean, this one occasionally, but Poe never. Poe is just as good against everything. But I like having these two together because of the ability synergy and I feel like I mean they're probably gonna have maybe like okay Mandalorians Greedo would have been nice to kill this thing oh, look at that look at that okay so we're letting red 3 go then that feels wrong but we can kill this and ambush it in, which is amazing I mean, I really like the idea of ambushing it. Kind of wish I had that surprise trick now. Mm. I really don't want to get rid of red three. I guess it's black one. But that feels wrong to me. Maybe we're just getting rid of sneak attack. Because we already have... Um, let's ambush in... Burrito. Kill it. No. Just get that card out of the game. Okay, yeah, he's definitely doing the upgrade thing. Alright, Ezra's not bad. Surprise strike's not bad. Red 3. We just want card advantage. Card advantage seems good. Next turn, we're just playing Poe, right? Yeah, let's just... He's flipping Sabine. Um, we could ambush him. And do the thing with Ezra where we get to... Direct Sacrifice. Do we want that? Just discard that. We don't need that card. Ambushing. Ambushing is just crazy, man. Okay. We're flipping on five. He does get Sabine here. Okay. Okay. Rogue operative gets to ambush in and kill things. That feels really good. go there okay 
ambush rogue kill oh they they both have shields no they just have upgrades okay deploy yeah I'm probably making some misplays here but that's okay it's part of the learning process right Um, I think we can just go face and just outpace him here. This is a good card too. He's got 5 HP now. So we can play Falcon for a cause here. I think that's seems good. Okay. because we're just pushing so much damage at them right now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're just putting ourselves in a place where it's too much. Right, what's this? Wrecker seems good. Um, push past to for space to discard the rest of the cards. We'll put this on the top. For sure. This is a good discard fodder, I think, and it will just pass. All right, we're gonna be at six resources if we play, if we keep the Falcon going. Yes, we do want to keep it running. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, good game. Another good one, man. Just ambush. Being able to ambush in every turn is just disgusting. We didn't even use Poe. Poe was kind of like our uh, ace in the hole. Just holding it for when we needed it. We kept having good plays without having to use Poe. Um, didn't even get to use the Poe black one thing. But we didn't need to. Alright, up against Ray Blue here. Um, can go... Ketsu into Ezra. No, we're keeping Poe, we're always keeping Poe. I think we get rid of one Ezra and... Cartel. One Ezra for sure. Kind of want to have... Well, we have Falcon in space if we need something to run space on turn two, so... Yep, which we do. Falcon's not going to be able to kill Restore, but it's going to be able to ping it good. I guess we're going to let Ezra go. Yeah, let, him, let Ezra go. cool. I forgot about that. It's a 
good card to have against them. He's playing that there, okay. Do we even care about the restore? No, because Ketsu can kill it. We do not care. Ketsu is very good. Our opponent doing. How much is a moment of peace? Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't care about that thing at all right now. Okay. I'll just use Ketsu to kill the shield. Uh. Yes. Sure. Here we have another falcon. Second cuts gets to. We can play Leia or Poe. Yeah, we can use Ketsu to kill the experience on um, the Yoda. So let's do that. We can also lay this thing so that he can't do anything with it. Yeah, let's do that first. Well, Falcon's gonna die because he has 7 HP. We could kill one of his experience so they trade. That seems smart. So many options here. Okay, so we're gonna do is Leia, Exhaust, Yoda. Then what we're gonna do is use Ketsu to kill Restored's experience if he attacks into our Falcon. Yes. Either one is fine, right? Yeah. Nice. Ketsu is doing some work this game. Next turn we can just finish, hopefully finish off the game with um, four cause and red three. Okay, Vigilance is a card. He's killing Ketsu, I'm sure. Ketsu's been extremely annoying. Okay. Um. Kind of want to just kill Yoda, to be honest. Let's get that off the field. <clears throat> Life gain decks are always going to be a pain in the butt. Okay. Ooh. That's pretty disgusting, actually. Um, I think we're letting Four Cause go because of the cards that we have. Just 
attained because this comes down with six power. So we can kill Ray immediately when it comes into play. Yeah, and Red 3 does, does work this turn. See what he does. Okay. So that's a Sentinel. So. He's trying to protect Red Ray here. Um, Wrecker can do. Damn it, 5 damage to a friendly ground unit. So these have Saboteur, right? Yeah. So we're just going to go face. So we'll do two to that. Oh, we have a shield on Leah. That's pretty disgusting. Okay. Um, sneaky, sneak attacking wrecker. We're just playing the wrecker. So if he wants to swing into Rogue, then he trades. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to use Wrecker here. To kill both. Oh, okay, that's what he did. But do we want to just use Wrecker to kill? I think so. That'll do five damage to something. We didn't have to sneak attack this thing, but you know, what are you gonna do? Okay, cool. Um, go Falcon Red 3 here, I think, or Poe Greedo. I think maybe Poe Greedo is better. Guessing he has redemption in the stack too. I'm not sure sneak attacking that was the right move. But you know, this is what playtesting is for, right? Okay, all the light beam stuff. Poe. Greedo. Attack surprise strike. Okay, that's pretty good. So we can surprise strike for nine here. Yeah, we're just, I mean, at this point in the game, we're just keeping all of our cards for the most part. Defeat a unit. Wonderful. to kill something, so I think that's a good idea. Okay. That was a weird, weird card.
He's going face. Then we'll surprise strike it. Okay. Um. Since he's not, we're just gonna kill it like that, because that's the bigger threat. Claim the initial. Sweet. Uh, K2SO's is pretty good here. Red 3 is not bad. Red 3 is the surprise strike. I mean, it does just die. To that restored arc right at the moment. We playing is K2SO surprise strike this turn or red three? I mean, I'm holding everything. I entrenched is quite annoying. The problem is we're just trying to w we don't want them to get in it um, like a redemption. This, this matchup will just be extremely boring. K2SO is good. We'll just use Greta to kill anything that's a pain. On the ground. Um, no. Okay. Thanks, I guess. Surprise strike is pretty disgusting. Red three is pretty sweet. What do we want to do here? I think red three just is kind of the oddball out here. If we play double surprise strike for a cause, that seems like our best bet. The only reason I'm getting rid of red three here is just because it doesn't feel like things are going to be that it doesn't feel like it's a good card to have right now okay we're starting to pull away here hopefully once they get like a redemption this turn. I think we're going to get it for five. Um, heroic Sacrifice and I think Heroic Sacrifice is the best card to have, right? I mean, all these are good. Um, let's do that on the top and K2SO on the top so we can sneak attack K2SO after we Heroic Sacrifice. And then I think we just pass on these. I mean, surprise strike is also really good. Okay, there's so many good cards. My God, my goodness. Okay, oh, well, good game. For a cause, man. Coming in hot. Okay, we're not resourcing anything. Pass, and we'll just surprise trigger K2SO for the game. Good game. That was a good one. 
Um, definitely, life gain has its qualities to slow us down, but I, I was expecting like a Redemption or a Luke Skywalker, and those just never came, so that was a good one though, man. Another very strong showing from the stack. Just, okay. No, no Mulligan. Uh, Wrecker could be good. <clears throat> um, I think we're going to get rid of Red 3 and Heroic Sacrifice. I think Alea could be useful. Wrecker could come in handy for killing that. Okay. So he already claimed in. Whoa! What was that? That was weird. Oh, we got a red three, anyways. Okay, we'll let go of Ketsu here. Face. Okay. Pass. I have a very good curve here. Put one on red three. We're going to get in for four or more. so far. Let's go ahead and play the K2SO. <clears throat> I get to flip over Fennec next turn. And play a Poe. Go into a wrecker. Okay. Man, just getting all the good cards. Um, I don't want to keep here. We could potentially. I mean, I think Leia is probably the odd ball out. I just want to keep playing these amazing cards on curve. So we end up with K2SO for 5. Unless he has a way to kill it with Greedo, I guess. Or if he gets a shoot first. Yeah, we'll just do 3 damage. He will swing in for 17. We're almost at lethal, so we're going to try to attack him with Poe first, because if so, we can just play for a cost to potentially close the game out. He could have a surprise strike. I guess we could close the game out next turn with for a cost. He can't kill Poe, so we're going to play Poe first before we flip Fennec. Okay. I 
think we're in good shape. Bennett gets in for damage. Poe are five. If he kills Poe, no big deal. Okay. And for five, and then we four a cause next turn for the game. So Poe did his job by just sitting there. I mean, either way, we have. There's not. I don't think there's a way out for our opponent. Either way, we're going to attack him with our unit first. One of our units. Um, and then backup plan is for our cause. Poe is, uh, po is one of the best cards in the game. Like, its cost is five resources, it's a 6 6. The abilities are insane. It, you can do so many things. You can play defense with Poe and take out their units. You can play offense and go in for 8, 11 damage with Surprise Strike. Um, what is, what's happening here? Okay, you claim the initiative. Okay. Um, you can discard cards from their hand. You can defeat upgrades. Like, it's just, this is a, such a good card. We can let that go. Okay. Good game. Another good one from this deck, man. It's very, very strong. I just, I think this deck, on top of being incredibly aggressive and being able to play defense with ambush, it just, it's so well rounded. Like it, it has, it has a chance for just about everything. I would say like the toughest matchups are going to be like ex extreme life gain. Like heavy, heavy life gain, like every turn with a lot of removal. But uh, I think your ability to go wide helps against those kind of decks too, though. So I don't know. I haven't. I've yet to play a matchup where I was like, "This is a bad matchup." So it just feels very, very well rounded. And Poe is just like I said, just an amazing card. Like, like just look at this thing. It's five resources. It's a six-six. If you discard a card, you deal two extra damage. That's eight damage. I mean, there's been times when I've played Poe and I've been able with, like, if I had a Poe on the board and then a Poe in my hand with a sneak attack, I could do 16 damage with a double Poe play um, by discarding cards. I mean, the other big one is, like, you could do, uh, obviously, Surprise Strike does 11. Then you can also do, um, you could also do Heroic Sacrifice with a sneak attack Poe and out of nowhere just swing in for 10 damage, I believe it is. Yeah, which is just crazy. I mean, if you have sneak attack plus surprise strike, you can do 11 damage out of nowhere with the Poe. So just the fact that you're able to do that is insane. It's like such a strong comeback card on every level. Okay, so back for the post-game wrap-up. So this deck was super fun to play. It was a very, very dominant performance. We did lose one game to Kylo Yellow. Um, we kind of, they had two surprise strikes early and just got like a big, uh, big lead on us very early, but it was crazy. Like we almost won that game because we were, we were able to use Poe as a defensive unit and take out their units, like two units a turn with Poe. And then we had an opportunity to swing in for the 16 damage with Poe with, uh, discarding a card and then sneak attacking in another Poe, which was crazy. But we were three damage short. But we almost came back. It was it was crazy. But just the fact that we were able to almost come back in that matchup with, I mean, they were up twenty to three, and we we could have gotten it to twenty seven twenty seven, but they would have had the initiative and won the game. So just the fact that we were able to come back and and be resilient and just hold on was really cool. And that's what I love about this deck. It's just it's resilient. It's well rounded. I like well rounded decks because I don't like to bring in. A deck that just has super bad matchups and just pray that I don't hit aggro or pray that I don't hit control. I want to be able to play against everything and feel like I have a good chance. And just it be more about my skill as a player than it is about my draws in the deck. So that's what I love about this deck. I love that it has card draw. I love card draw and aggro decks is always amazing. And on top of that, you're already getting two cards per turn. So by like six resources, you're usually not resourcing anything else. Um, 
But yeah, give this one a shot. I'm telling you, you're gonna like it. This is such a fun deck. If you like, if you like aggro, you're gonna like this. But if, also, if you like decks that require a little more strategy than just swing into their face over and over again, that's that's what I really enjoy about it. Is the different things that you can do and the tools that you have at your disposal in this deck. Such a fun deck. But uh, I, I can't think of anything I would change at the moment. I think it really depends on cards that are revealed and then just, you know, as how the meta de develops. Like I said, I, I possibly would add in a third wrecker probably for either the black one or for a bamboozle. It just depends on what I feel like is the thing that I'm more worried about at a certain point. But I think two is fine for the time being because, like I said, most games you're not even winning. You don't even need Poe. Like you're winning before you get to the Poe turn. Or at least you don't even need to play it because you have so much pressure on the board. So, But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, y'all have a good one and peace out.